Welcome everybody to episode 1 of Fan Questions. Today we have a question from YouTube user Joshua for Christ 83 He asks, Hi Nathan, can you please make a tutorial on how to set up the compositing in Blender for the green screen? Thank you. Well Joshua, we sure can. Okay, so we're going to be showing how to set up green screening in Blender, or as it's technically termed, chroma key. Um, always want to make sure that your resolution here does match up with your footage and that you're using the same frame rate. Uh, I'm going to render out just this default scene here, or just this cube real quick, because we will need that in the compositor. First thing we're going to do is actually hop over into motion tracking. And we're going to open a clip up that has a nice green background on it. It's just me talking. Once the video is loaded, we are going to change from tracking over to the mask. We're going to create a garbage mask around my character. This basically will just tell the compositor that everything outside of this shape can be ignored and it doesn't need to run any processing through on that to uh, figure out what's green or not. Uh, and then to draw the shape, just holding down the control key and clicking to put the path and then toggling cyclic. Now I know from past experience that this is going to be backwards. And so if you just toggle the little invert button there, um, I guess the white should point towards the outside, or not the white, but these little lines, they should point towards what is being masked out. So obviously I do want to still exist and I want the outside to not exist. So just have to invert it and then it will work. Now we hop into the compositing. Right now we are at the scene. So we want to turn on use nodes. Now we have the render layer, render layer already here and the composite. We are going to add an output of a viewer node just because then we can have a node or the backdrop. You have to have the viewer node for that to work. Okay, now we're going to add an image. Although it won't actually be an image, it will be a video. Um, and we want to make sure we grab the same video we just grabbed, which I believe was 06 or 006 here. Um, frames, that's the total number of frames. I'm just going to set that to 3000. I don't think it's going to matter too much because we don't have that many frames in the, the timeline here. Check auto refresh. This way when you change frames, it will automatically change here and update. Um, we are going to need a mix node. The mix node is what we will be mixing the two layers together with, um, which right now doesn't really do anything, but that's because we're missing the keying node, which pretty much is where all the important stuff happens. Uh, we're going to select the key color and we'll just click on kind of a mid-tone green in this background area here, which as you'll notice now, kind of turn to the background all this muddy grayish color. Now what we can do is just actually look at the matte value here. Let me zoom the background out a bit. Uh, letter key, letter V rather on the keyboard zooms out, Alt V zooms in. Uh, and we notice there's a lot of this grayish color in the background that we don't want. So we are going to, well first off we're going to actually connect the matte to the fact value on the mix node, even though we're not seeing any effect of that right now. Select the keying node, and also all of our options show up right there. So we can slide everything off the screen and just get a nice clean picture of what's on the background. Um, we need to adjust the clip black and clip white. If you turn the black up, you'll notice we lose a lot of that gray color. And we can keep going and going. On this particular one, we can almost go all the way. Um, you might want to clip white, pull that down a bit to make sure everything on my character is a pure white. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is change the key color here a little bit. Because um, I don't particularly like how that one's turning out. Sometimes by just changing around the key color, you can get a better background. Let's see if I can't find one here that matches up. A little cleaner. Okay, so that's pretty good. I mean, we definitely have a lot of speckles going on, but we will clean those out. Uh, but what I want to do now is add in the 
remember where this is now the inputs it's a mask that uh, mask that we created we're going to connect it up to the garbage mat here and once this oh we do also have to select the mask so it knows what we're using and as we wait for this to run through come on okay well speaking of the mask there is one quick thing i want to show you over in motion right here this is animatable so say i'm talking and i'm moving my arms or something and you need to animate your mask the letter g grabs r rotates s scales the influence for how the curve looks and then you can animate these by hitting i on the keyboard that'll add a keyframe in jump some frames say ooh i'm kind of out of frame there you don't have to be super super precise with this i mean you could go in and line this up as neatly as you want it's potentially going to save your computer from having to do a little bit of work in processing the green screen but assuming you want to save yourself time and don't really care how much your computer has to work to do it you can leave plenty of green space around it it's not going to hurt anything but that is something you can animate same as everything else in blender g to move it r to rotate s to scale hit the letter i on the keyboard to insert a keyframe and i now have a little animated bit there that kind of moves between the frames so that is something i wanted to mention because you might need to know how to use that for something okay for some reason it's not it's not drawing the new matte background so we're going to just try and flush that through there we go i was just seeing some some dirty specks on my screen that i thought were dirty spots in the footage entirely my bad um but yeah i think i'm still gonna i'm gonna change we're gonna do a little bit of pre-blur that usually helps with some of the little specs uh letter v on the keyboard we'll zoom this image out alt v will zoom it in um click the move button there to move it around on non-linux systems i believe alt middle mouse button will move the background as well but that is something goofy on my system it like wants to move the whole window uh, I know you can turn it off, but I don't remember how. Pre-blur, see, so yeah, I put that to two. Now those little specks are all gone. Now we're going to pull the image back in here. You'll notice there's kind of a haze around my character. We can counter that by um, maybe, let's see, let's dilate, erode the edge a bit. You notice that turned it down a little. Let's put some feather in here. Um... We might actually want to use a negative feather. The feather will just kind of do a soft edge. So instead of it being a real hard, solid edge, it'll have a bit of, well, feathering. It'll gradually turn to an alpha. Um, but messing around with the dilate road options, it's looking pretty good about there. Um, I could probably use a little bit of work. About that actually looks about perfect. Um, and I mean, it's going to vary depending on what you're using as your background image because if the colors match pretty close you can get away with a dirtier a dirtier job on the mask than if it's something where the colors are completely opposite and it's going to stick out like a sword. Well, if i was on a hot pink background it would probably be blatantly obvious that this was green screened in if i was in some sort of like a natural woods or something you wouldn't really notice it because the colors match up now you can use other things than just a render layer say you want to green screen yourself on top of some picture I have a random image here on my desktop which we are going to use and we'll just drop that right into the image um, now you're noticing my head's cut off and the bottom which you can't tell is cut off it's easily fixable if your background image is a different size than your video image which is very very possible just put a scale node in and run your image through that changing from relative to render size it'll take a minute as it rescales um, if your picture is smaller it is going to scale it up and it will distort your image so in this case you can't tell much but it's kind of stretched a little taller than it should be because it had to make space for that 1920 by 1080 and my screen's like 
I think 1366 by 768. So I had to variate that a little bit. But that is, in a nutshell, how you do green screening, green screening, aka chroma keying, in the Blender compositor, how you set everything up. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop us a line. Either leave any comments on this video, or hit us up on any of our social networks, or you could even send us an email. Until next time, um, it's been a pleasure. And yeah, send us your questions so we can answer them and make more videos. Thanks for watching, and God bless.